Welcome, everybody. We're glad that you've come to worship with us. It's good to see everybody here today. My microphone's not on, is it? Oh, there we go. We got it now. Now you all can hear me. Good morning and welcome, everybody. Good to see everybody here. We're glad that you have come to worship with us today and be here in the house of the Lord. It's a great day to be here in fellowship and worship the Lord today. So as we begin our time together, we're going to start with a song called I Will Bless the Lord. So let's all stand together and join together in singing I Will Bless the Lord.
Let's join together and pray. Father, we come before you and we thank you for the opportunities we have to come together to worship you. And I pray that as we are here today, that we would bless your name, that we would give you glory. And Father, we would turn our hearts towards you today, Lord. Father, I just pray for our country and I pray for our nation. And Lord, I just pray that you would bring revival to our land and that your spirit would just sweep through with a mighty rushing wind, Lord. Father, I pray that we'd be able to be still and know that you are God and that we would set our hearts towards you today, Lord. Father, I pray for those who are not with us. I just pray that your hand would be with each and every one, that you would touch and that you would heal and restore and make new, Lord. And Father, as we have come together to worship you, I pray that your presence would be here. Lord, that you would touch our hearts with your message and that we would obediently follow you in all that we do, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you would do a work here in our church and that you would lead us and that you would guide us and that we would see people come to know you each and every week, Lord. Thank you so much, God, for your blessings and thank you so much for all that you have done, for all that you will do for our Father, for it's in your wonderful, precious name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, just a couple of uh, quick announcements, things that are coming up. We've got youth campus this week, and so be praying for us as we uh, go to uh, camp this week. It's going to be a wonderful time. We're looking forward to that. Operation Christmas Child, we are collecting items for that. You see a list in your bulletin. Also, you have we have these little cups up here. If you have like to take one home and fill it up with change and then bring it back, you're welcome to do so. You can bring that back. Also, the ladies will begin be uh, beginning their uh, women's Bible study starting in August. If you'd like some information on that, you can talk with Nina about that. And um, she will get you the uh, information on that. And so those are a couple of things that are coming up. If you're here with us today, if you're a guest, or if you have a prayer request, and the bulletin is one of these slips, if you would take a moment to uh, fill one of these out, then drop that in the offering plate all, as it goes by. And also Wednesday evening, I would invite you to come at 7 o'clock. We have our Bible study for uh, all ages. And so that's this week at uh, Wednesday on Wednesday night. So Paul, would you come and lead us? My Lord is near me all the time.
stands, we sing this last song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 6. We've been in a series talking about captive, how taking our minds, holding our thoughts captive. We think about Satan and how he wants to mess with our minds and get us to think about all kinds of things that are contrary to what God would have us to think about. And as Jesus is here, he's giving his Sermon on the Mount. It's in Matthew chapter 6. And we come to a passage of Scripture where he talks about worry. And... As we think about worry, I think it's something that probably we all have done at different points in times in our life. There might be some here today that have some things on their minds that we're thinking about, that we're worried about, and we're wondering what's going to happen. And as we look to what the definition of worry is, Webster describes worry as to think about problems or fears, to feel or show fear and concern because you think something bad has happened or could happen. Now, when you think about worry, we get things into our mind and we're thinking about things, oftentimes it's things that might happen, could happen, could possibly happen, but what ends up happening as we're thinking about all these things? Have you ever noticed what it does to you physically? Your stomach might start to turn, you might get all anxious and about different things that could happen, and then when the time comes, whenever the event or activity or thing that's on the counter comes up, and it doesn't go the way we thought it was going to do. We've worried about it for nothing. We've gotten all worked up. Well, as we look at what the scriptures say, Jesus gives a passage of scripture here in Matthew chapter 6. We're going to be looking at verses 25 through 34. And as I read through these verses, I think the one thing, the key thing that Jesus is trying to emphasize here and wants us to pick up is that when we know the Father, we have nothing to worry about. When you know God, when he is in your heart, when you are walking with him on a daily basis, you have nothing to worry about. Yes, there will be things that will be coming up. Yes, there will be things we'll look at and we'll, we'll be thinking about those things. But when it comes to worry, we don't need to worry about those things because we know the Father. He will set your heart at ease. When you know the Father, there is nothing to worry about. Take a look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you shall put on. Is not life the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. 
Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they sow, do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto, day, unto the day is the evil thereof. Now as we look at what Jesus is giving to us here, he's giving a passage of scripture talking about worry, and basically he's saying, don't worry about life. Don't worry about those things. He says in 25 and verse 31, he says, release your worry. Release your worry. Oftentimes, when things are coming up and we're not sure what's going to happen, we begin to take that upon us and we begin to worry about it and we focus on it and we get all worked up on the inside. But as we look at verses 25, verse 31, Jesus gives the physical things in life and he says, don't worry about those. Give them to the Father. The Father is going to take care of you. God will take care of you. When you begin to think about all those things and the worry comes, what's happening and it's on the inside? We lose sight of who God is and we focus on the circumstance that's in front of us. And we take that upon us and we begin to carry that heavy burden. But Jesus says the Father will take care of you. How often do we worry about the physical things in life? And every month we have the bills that come due. Do we worry about being able to pay those bills? We have the groceries, we have the tests. Anyone out there have tests to worry about? Thinking about, well... Go to the Father. Let Him be part of your life. Car payments, bills, finances at home, whatever it might be. Doctor's appointments. Anybody worry about doctor's appointments? Tests? Things that are on the horizon? We don't know what's on the horizon. We begin to worry about those things. But when you know the Father, and He's part of your life, He can set your heart at ease. We don't need to worry about those things because we know that God is going to take care of us. You see, when you know the Father, you have nothing to worry about. God provides. And oftentimes it's in ways that we never thought he would. Have you ever had something that you've been worried about and you've been thinking about it and focused on it and then all of a sudden God opens the door and he provides for you in a way that you never thought he was going to do. And when we look at that we thought, we think, we begin to think, I never thought God was going to do this. But he does. And he takes care of you. And he provides for your needs. You have a bill that comes due, uh, something that's on the horizon, then you're thinking, how can I pay for this? And then all of a sudden, God just provides in a way you never thought possible. That's God taking care of things. Jesus says, don't worry about these things. He gives us some examples. He, he talks about the birds. He talks about the birds and how they're taken care of. Have you ever sat outside and just kind of watched the birds? Do you see any worry in their, what they're doing? I know when I first came out, and I was out in the office, and I saw the cranes. I heard the cranes. I went like, what in the world? What? I walked outside, and I saw the cranes. There was like five of them out back. And I thought, I have, we have those in zoos out west. And they're out here, they're running wild. But when you look at the, like the cranes, or you look at the egrets, or you look at, uh, I have cardinals sometimes that come into our yard, or sparrows, hawks sitting way up on the trees. When you look at these birds and stuff, they have no cares about where their food's going to come from. They're not worried about life. They're not worried about things. They know they're going to be taken care of. All their needs are taken care of. But sometimes we get wrapped up on how things are going to happen. Jesus says, look, you are more valuable than these animals, than the, than the flowers and the lilies and all these things that I've created. You are more valuable. The Heavenly Father will take care of you. He will provide for all of your needs. When we begin to worry, we begin to take that upon ourselves. And we're thinking, I have to do something. It's coming up. I don't know how it's going to work out. But yet, God says, trust me. I will take care of you. If you have a big decision that's coming up or something that's, on the, that's in the future, 
Let go of it. Give it over to God. Release it to the Lord and allow him to work because he will take care of you. See, God will take care of you. He will provide for you. He takes care of the birds. Jesus refers to the birds and he, and he says, look, they don't reap, they don't sow, they don't do any of that stuff, but the Heavenly Father takes care of them. How much more is he going to take care of you? See, God will provide for your physical needs. And the principle is that when you know the Father, there is nothing to worry about. He talks about the lilies of the field, representing the clothing that we have. And, and again, talking about the animals and how they don't have to worry about things. But when we think about the lilies of the field, in that day and time, there were gladiolas that would grow in the fields. So you'd have the fields and you'd have those flowers that would grow. And when you would walk out through the fields, you could see all these different colored flowers in with the field. It was a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. I think about it around out here when you drive, sometimes as you're driving through in the springtime, you hit some of those meadows and you have all the different colored flowers that are in the meadows. You have this big oak tree that'll be in the middle and there'll be all these flowers that'll be around it. It's beautiful to see. Jesus says that God takes care of the lilies of the fields. How much more will he take care of you? And as he is drawing this illustration, he points toward Solomon. Remember back with Solomon? Solomon was blessed by God. He was the wealthiest man in the world. He had everything that he could ever want. He had everything that he could dream on. It was all given to him. He had nothing to worry about. But what happened was he lost his focus on God. They got caught up in all the things that he had, and he eventually ended up moving away from the Lord. But as Jesus is here, he's saying, remember Solomon and how he, how beautiful he is, but even the lilies of the field aren't as beautiful as they are. God will take care of you. He will take care of you. See, when you know the Father, there is nothing to worry about. And then when you look at this also, he gives us one other illustration. He uses the grass. You know, that day and time, there wasn't a whole lot in the area to burn. So there was grass. There were things that were left over. They would take and they would burn those. But the grass of the field. Anybody out there have a yard? You got to mow? The grass of the field, you know, we have it. It sometimes gets to be annoying. If you don't take care of it, it gets to be too tall. And then you have to go and then it becomes a real problem. But they would take the grass the leftover stuff, they would use that for kindling for the fire. And he says that, that these are things are going to be thrown into the fire. But when, when we think about what God was going to do, he says, God will take care of you. He says, don't worry about these things. Don't worry about life because God the Father is going to take care of you. And so when you focus on the Father, when you know the Father, there is nothing to worry about. We don't need to worry. We don't need to get all worked up. Yes, there'll be things we have to plan for and look towards, but as far as the worry side goes, we don't need to worry about that because we give it over to God. So when you're tempted to worry, when you have those thoughts come in, when Satan wants to get you all worked up, because you know that's what he likes to do, he likes to distract you, move you away from the Lord, refocus your thoughts, come back on the Lord, give it over to him, and say, God, I'm going to let you worry about it, and I'm not going to worry about it. Because I know that you... Are going to take care of me because Jesus says in this passage of scripture he will take care of you he will take care of you so when the word begins to come and when you start to think about those things release it to the father give it over to the Lord secondly rely upon your father rely upon God take a look at verses 29 through 30 and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. And then look down at verse number 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Jesus is making the point, he says, to rely upon your Father. The Father knows everything that you need. So because he knows what we need, we don't have to worry about those things. We don't have to worry about those things. Everything we need, God knows, and he provides for us. Isn't that amazing when you stop to think about it? The Heavenly Father knows what you need and what Jesus says before you even need it. He knows what you need even before you need it. 
That's an amazing thought when you stop and think about it because God knows everything you need and he will provide for you. We might think that we need something, but God says, no, you need this instead. And he provides and he does something for you and he works in your life and he does it in a way that you never thought possible. It could be that you need a, a, a car of some kind and you're looking for one and you think you find one, but then God opens the door for something else and it turns out to be something better than what you had looked at before. It could be financially you're having some struggles and some difficulties, but things come along and the door opens and God provides in a way that you never thought possible. He's providing for you. He is taking care of you. The Father will take care of you. He knows exactly what you need before you even need it. He knows your thoughts. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows everything that's going on in your life. And he promises that he will take care of you. And so when the worry comes, rely upon the Father. Release it to the Father, then rely upon him to provide for your needs. You know, when I think of worry, oftentimes the area of finances come up. We begin to worry about our finances. We look and we think, how am I going to do this? How is this going to happen? How are things going to work? But God says, I will provide for you. I will take care of you. And he does. You see, those that know Jesus, know the Father. When you know the Father, you have nothing to worry about in life. Because he will take care of you. God knows and God provides. Verse 30 there, there's something in, in this verse. In verse number 30, we see Jesus, as he's talking with the people, he says, O ye of little faith, O ye of little faith, Oftentimes when we worry, we begin to take everything up, we begin to take things upon ourselves rather than rely upon God. And so he says here, oh you of little faith. Little faith. Little in this passage of scripture is used by only by Jesus. It's a tender rebuke for, for anxiety. So what is he saying? He's looking at them and he's saying, have faith in God. Have faith in in the Father. The Father created everything. The Father owns everything. The Father created you. So have faith in Him. He will provide for all your needs. You see, worry and anxiety are the opposite of faith. Why? Because we're taking it upon ourselves rather than relying upon God. And as we think about this, God wants us to rely upon Him. And when you know the Father, you have nothing to worry about. Because He says He will take care of you. God will supply for all of your needs. Paul wrote that to us. He said, my God shall supply all your needs. He will provide for all your needs. He will take care of you. The thing is, we have to have faith in the Almighty God to do that. We come to a point where we say, God, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to put my faith and my trust in you. And as I put my faith and my trust in you, I know that I know that I know that you will provide for all of my needs. And God can, and he will, and he will take care of you. But when we worry, we take our eyes off of the Father. We turn toward our circumstances. We lose sight of who God is. And that's what Satan wants to do in our life. That's why, as we think about captive, we have to take every thought captive. We have to put that all in our minds. We have to be careful what we think about, because the things that we think about influence what we become. You see, if Satan can get us to focus or to turn away from God, he knows that he's winning in our life. And that's a challenge for us. We have to stay focused on the Lord. And remember that he will take care of us. So when the worry begins to come in your life, release your worry to the Father. Rely upon the Father to take care of you. And third, reset your thoughts on Jesus. Reset your thoughts on the Lord. Take a look at verses 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. When the worry comes and we begin to think about all the things that are happening or could possibly happen, Oftentimes, I have found in my own personal life that I'll begin to worry about things that could happen, might happen, and then they don't happen the way I've been thinking about them for the last however many long time I've been thinking about them. 
I got worried about it. And God took care of things. You see, what we see here, Jesus saying is to hold our thoughts captive, to focus on the heavenly Father. Because the antidote to worry is doing what? Focusing on God. Jesus said what? Seek ye first, and what are we to seek? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. When you look at the verses prior to these, this passage that we have here, when you look at verses prior, Jesus talks about storing up your treasures in heaven. He talks about focusing your life and turning toward heaven. And so as Jesus is here, he's saying, seek you first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The antidote to worry is focusing on the Father. Because when you know the Father, you have nothing to worry about. And Jesus says the number one thing to do in your life is to seek him first. When we see that word, seek ye first, seek the kingdom first, seek in this passage of scripture means to crave. To crave. Is there something that you crave in life? What really gets you going? Is there some, if I'm up here talking right now, is there some food items in your mind that you're thinking about? Something you can think, oh man, I really, really, really would like to have that. Or this is my favorite food. You crave it, you want it, and right now your mouth is just kind of starting to water a little bit. Because you're starting to think about those things. Now refocus, come on back. You've got that in your mind, that's something you crave, that's something you would really, really like. Or is there a place that you really enjoy going to? It could be a restaurant, it could be a beach, it could be out in the forest, it could be someplace where you're like, this is the place that I really, really like to go. And you look forward to it. Every time you get to go to that place, you're like, this is the place that I really enjoy going to. And when you go to that place and you're there in that place, you're happy, you're comfortable, you're loving it. It's just, just the best thing ever. When we look to what Jesus says here, he says, seek ye first. In other words, crave the kingdom of God. Now, whatever it was that we were thinking in, my, in our mind at that moment in time, do we crave the kingdom of God like we crave the item that was on our mind? That's what Jesus was getting to. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Do we crave the kingdom of God like we crave whatever it was that was on your mind at that moment in time? See, God wants us to crave the kingdom of God. He wants us to seek it, to go after it, to want it, to long for it. Because when we do, our focus will be on Him. Our focus will be on the Father rather than the things of this world. There will be difficulties in life. There will be challenges in life. There will be things that come our way. We may not know or understand how things are going to work. We know that that comes. But when those times in life come, when the health challenges come, when the bills and the pills and the ills come our way, we can focus on the Lord and say, you know what, God, I'm terrified. Yeah, I have this worried. I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to put my faith and my trust in you because I know that I know that I know when I know the Father that I have nothing to worry about. You are going to take care of me. And God will. That's what he wants. That's the faith factor. The faith factor is turning our hearts, our minds over to him and saying, God, I trust you to provide and to work. And as we do that, and as we say, God, I trust you, then there's nothing for us to worry about because God will take care of you. He will take care of everything that you need. So Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And as we do all those things, then he says, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto day that is the evil thereof. Jesus is saying what? If you're focused on the Father, if you're focused on the kingdom, don't, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to take care of itself. Things are going to work out. God will provide. God will take care of you. There's no reason to worry when we seek him first. So what are some things we can do to keep him first, to seek the kingdom of God? One of the first things that we can do is have a daily time where we're in the word. When we're in the word, when we're reading his word, we're putting his word into our mind. 
If you're having struggles and difficulties with worry, go through the scriptures and take a look and find other places where people may have been worried or find verses that can encourage you when it comes to worry and say, this is what the Bible says. And so when Satan then comes before you and starts to play with your mind and mess with your mind and you get all worked up about things, you can go to the word and say, this is what the Bible says. This is what Jesus said. This is what the word says. And then you don't have to worry about things because you're putting his word into your hearts. See, the temptation is for us to begin to worry and to take that upon us. And Jesus says what? Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, come to me. The Father says, come to me. The Father says, if you know me, you have nothing to worry about. Because I will take care of you daily. Spend time in his word. Get to know his word. This is our manual. This is our playbook. This is how God speaks to you and to us. He speaks to us through his word. Second thing we can do is have a daily time of prayer. When we're studying the word, we spend time in the word, learning his, his precepts, learning about him, but then we spend time in prayer each and every day. Spending time in prayer. They can be short prayers. They can be long prayers. They can be prayers alone. They can be with somebody. They can be by yourself. Wherever it is, you can pray. We saw last week, the Bible tells us to what? Pray without ceasing. Spend time in his word on a regular basis. And as we do that, then we have daily fellowship with God. We're reading his word. We're studying his word. We're praying. We're spending time with him. He becomes our friend. He becomes our father. He becomes the one that we go to, the one that we rely upon, the one who is there to provide for us. And so when worry comes your way, when you begin to have those thoughts, focus on the father. Because if you put God first, your material needs will be provided. They will always be provided. God promises, my God shall supply all your needs. Jesus says, don't worry because God will take care of you. God will take care of you. And then as we read his word, we study his word, we fellowship with him, we become obedient to him, and we walk in his footsteps, and then we have nothing to worry about. Worry no longer has a grip on our life. Worry no longer has a grip on our life because when it comes up then we recognize it and we say God I'm worried about this I'm worried about this doctor appointment I'm worried about this bill I'm worried about my family I'm worried about this child I'm worried about a marriage whatever it might be and we fill in the blank and as we come to know the father and as we are walking with him we go to him and we put that under his hands and we say God I'm not going to worry about it anymore because I know that you will take care of me. And as you know the Father, the more you know the Father, the closer you come to him, the less you need to worry about what goes on in life. Because as we see here in this passage of Scripture, Jesus says, you don't have to worry about these things because God will take care of you. And as we look at these verses, we see the Gentiles, but, uh, Jesus references, he says, the Gentiles seek all these things. They were into the lifestyles where they were seeking things, wanting things, wanting to add things. But yet, Jesus says, don't worry about those things. Let the Father work in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The principle is, is that if you put God first, he will provide for you. He will take care of you. And the more you know the Father, the closer you come to the Father, you don't need to worry about things in life. You don't need to worry about those things. Worry no longer takes hold of your life. Remember the definition that we had for worry at the beginning? To think about a problem or fears, to feel or show fear and concern because you think something bad has happened or could happen. That was Webster's definition of worry. No longer do we have to do those things. We don't have to worry about those things because we know the Father. And when you know the Father, there is nothing to worry about. And so I would ask each of us here today, are there things in our lives that we can point to, that we can think about, that we can say, you know what, I'm worried about these things. I have this decision to make. I have these bills to pay. I have a doctor's appointment coming up. I've got bad news about whatever it is. Are there things in your life that you could point to and you can say, I'm worried about these things? I would encourage you today to release those things to the Lord. 
to give them over to the Father. Release your worry to God. Rely upon Him to provide for all of your needs. And God will take care of you. All of us here have probably had times in our lives when we can look and we can say, you know what? I can remember a time when I was struggling. I was having difficulties. I was worried about this. But then I gave it over to the Lord. And when I gave it over to the Lord, He released me from the worry. He took care of my needs. And God did an amazing thing in your life. Is there something today that you're worried about? Give it over to God. Give it to Jesus. Let him do a work. Let him be the one to do the worry. And as you do that, you'll feel the release from that worry. It'll make a difference in your life. Because no longer will you be carrying that burden. No longer will you be carrying that burden. You'll be like the birds that are out and about. They have not a care in the world. They're not thinking about all the things going on. All they're thinking about is just getting food and living and life. They know that God will take care of them. But I'm going to ask this today. Do you? God will take care of you. When you know the Father, there is nothing to worry about. Let's pray together. Father, I just come before you and I thank you that I praise you for all that you have done and for all that you will do. Lord God, I think about each of us here today, Lord, and I pray that you would touch our hearts and if there is something that we are worried about today, Lord, I just pray that you would take that burden from us, that we would give that over to you, that we would allow you to work in our life, but that we would put our faith and our trust in you so that we would know that you will provide. Father, I thank you for all that you have done and for all that you will do. And I pray that if someone here is struggling today, that you would touch their heart, that you would restore their heart, that you would renew their heart. And Lord God, that we would know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are God. For it's in your wonderful, blessed name I pray. Amen. Paul, would you come lead us in? Let's all stand together. We're going to have a hymn invitation. If God has touched your heart in some way, if you would like to come and pray or if you would like for me to pray with you, I'd be more than happy to do that at that time, at this time. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Always remember that when you know the Father, you have nothing to worry about. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the time in your word, Lord. Father, I pray that we would go out and renew it and revive the Lord, that we would remember that when we know you, there is nothing to worry about. You provide for us, you take care of us, you love us, Lord. And I thank you for each person that is here today. 
Lord God, I pray that in all things you be blessed and that you be glorified. For it's in your wonderful, blessed name I pray. Amen.